Tesla is asking the U.S. government to waive tariffs on graffiti coming from China, claiming it can't get it elsewhere. Now, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, it is pronounced as graffiti or graphite. You know that the technology, the uh, material that is used uh, in uh, electric vehicle uh, batteries. Now, in three separate filings with the United States Trade Representative's Office, Tesla has asked the government to continue to waive tariffs tariffs on one artificial graphite or artificial graffiti in powder or flake form artificial graffiti in powder form natural gra uh, natural graffiti in powder form tesla says that it is it still cannot access graphite in sufficient volume outside of china here's a quote tesla supports the renewal of the exclusion of artificial graphite from the section 301 tariffs tesla has demonstrated with the information presented in this request that artificial graphite is currently not available in the specifications nor capacity outside of its current suppliers and China that is required for Tesla's manufacture of EV batteries in the United States. I'm assuming that Tesla needs this graphite out to a graffiti to uh, build its 46 AD batteries. Tesla uses a significant amount of graphite in the anode of its battery cells any tariff on the material would negatively affect tesla's battery cost therefore the cost of electric vehicles and as the biggest consumer of battery cells in the united states through its partnership with panasonic at gigafactory in nevada it would have the greatest impact there are efforts to produce graphite in larger volumes in north america uh, electric says it has reported a new moon graphite project in quebec canada which is amongst the most advanced tesla also indicated that it is working on new chemistry that it obtained through a startup acquisition that utilizes a new silicon in the anode to replace the graphite. The automaker indicated that it plans to use this silicon in some versions of its 4680 battery cells that will be produced in-house. The company is currently ramping up production at its large-scale 10 gigawatt hour pilot plant in Fremont and hopes to deploy 4680 battery cells production capacity in even larger volumes 100 gigawatt hour at gigafactory berlin and gigafactory texas next year once they become operational well friends let me know what do you think about tesla's these efforts to have more materials to build its um, electric vehicles and also to be honest i don't know whether it's graffiti or graphite let me know please in the comment section below this is armin harayan from torquenews.com please subscribe and join our community and god bless you peace with all of you and let's move on to our next tesla story. Tesla is asking the U.S. government to waive tariffs on graffiti coming from China, claiming it can't get it elsewhere. Now, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, it is pronounced as graffiti or graphite. You know that the technology, the uh, material that is used uh, in uh, electric vehicle uh, batteries. Now, in three separate filings with the United States Trade Representative's Office, Tesla has asked the government to continue to waive tariffs tariffs on one artificial graphite or artificial graffiti in powder or flake form artificial graffiti in powder form natural gra uh, natural graffiti in powder form tesla says that it is it still cannot access graphite in sufficient volume outside of china here's a quote tesla supports the renewal of the exclusion of artificial graphite from the section 301 tariffs tesla has demonstrated with the information presented in this request that artificial graphite is currently not available in the specifications nor capacity outside of its current suppliers and China that is required for Tesla's manufacture of EV batteries in the United States. I'm assuming that Tesla needs this graphite out to a graffiti to uh, build its 46 AD batteries. Tesla uses a significant amount of graphite in the anode of its battery cells. Yeah. <laughs>
any tariff on the material would negatively affect Tesla's battery cost, therefore the cost of electric vehicles, and as the biggest consumer of battery cells in the United States through its partnership with Panasonic at Gigafactory in Nevada, it would have the greatest impact. There are efforts to produce graphite in larger volumes in North America. Uh, Electrex says it has reported a Nouveau Monde graphite project in Quebec, Canada, which is amongst the most advanced. Tesla also indicated that it is working on new chemistry that it obtained through a startup acquisition that utilizes a new silicon in the anode to replace the graphite. The automaker indicated that it plans to use this silicon in some versions of its 4680 battery cells that will be produced in-house. The company is currently ramping up production at its large-scale 10 gigawatt hour pilot plant in Fremont and hopes to deploy 4680 battery cells production capacity in even larger volumes 100 gigawatt hour at Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Texas next year once they become operational. Well, friends, let me know what do you think about Tesla's these efforts to have more materials to build its um, electric vehicles and also, to be honest, I don't know whether it's graffiti or graphite. Let me know, please, in the comment section below. This is Armin Haryan from torquenews.com. Please subscribe and join our community and God bless you. Peace with all of you and let's move on to our next Tesla story. Gigapress development is becoming so important important for Tesla that Tesla now is partnering with a little known casting company for Gigapress development. Tesla is partnering with Exco Technologies Limited, a Canadian company that specializes in designing and developing dies, molds, assemblies, and casting for automotive companies. The company's CEO confirmed on an earnings call earlier today, reports Joey Klander from Tesla Radi. Joey says Tesla has long had a focus on manufacturing efficiencies and arguably is the most efficient and the most popular was the introduction of the Gigapress. The Gigapress is a massive casting machine developed by Italian company Idra, which helps Tesla cast the chassis and bodies of its all-electric vehicles in a swift, efficient, and non-time consuming manner. Tesla has worked with IDRA to develop massive Gigapress machines that will be used at Gigafactory Texas and Gigafactory Berlin. There are already Gigapress machines working at Tesla's Fremont factory in Northern California, friends. Now it appears that Tesla's partnership for casting and molding technologies is going far beyond IDRA. Earlier today, Exco Technologies held its quarter three 2021 earnings call, where it detailed how Tesla is revolutionizing the manner of automotive manufacturing throughout the earlier sector, and actually throughout the entire sector. CEO of um, Exco Technologies, Darren Kirk, said, uh, and this is via Seeking Alpha, said the following. I'm going to read that. One key trend that will continue to benefit Exco is the increasing size in complexity of die casting aluminum components. Tesla has really pushed the envelope on this front using massive giga presses, which are much larger die cast machines than those used previously. This enabled Tesla to cast entire subframes of the vehicle in one shot with giga castings rather than assemble numerous stamped metal components in the body shop, creating significant space and manufacturing efficiency gains. The tooling required to facilitate this process is very large and extremely complex, limiting the number of players able to complete effectively. Our, uh, our cast tool division is already the primary supplier of all shots and and tooling for Tesla's Gigapress globally. This provides a clear indication of the depth we have in the design and know-how required to meet the challenges of the industry. We expect traditional OEMs will follow Tesla's lead in using these large die-cast machines as they transition to an electric vehicle future. That's what he said. Kirk said that its cast tool division, which is casting and stamping 
Gaming entity owned by Exco is already supplying Tesla's Giga Press with shot and tooling parts. Kirk stated that he expects Exco's relationship with Tesla to continue to thrive, especially as Gigafactory Texas and Gigafactory Berlin are concerned. Kirk also indicated that Exco is involved with Tesla through all of its divisions, but he would detail explicit evidence that would show how Tesla is being helped by Exco, other than with shot and tooling. Peter Skull, an analyst of BMO Capital, asked how the two companies were working together, and Kirk stated the following. He said, well, I'm not going to speak to who's privileging those molds today, but I will say that all of our divisions are involved with Tesla at some level, and they are an important and growing customer across the board, and we see significant opportunity to expand on that. Now it looks like the Exco's relationship with Tesla is going to grow, and this is going to become a major part for Tesla's business. Who knows, maybe Tesla will build casting machines and sell them to other car makers, legacy car makers. I don't know. Casting could perhaps be Tesla's biggest advantage as it continues to ramp up manufacturing and assembly efforts at uh, its facilities. Casts for each of its vehicles can made um, can be made in a matter of few seconds, friends. That's why this is very important. Effectively revolutionizing the way automotive bodies are made. Tesla has also shown that casting will play a pivotal role in the company's decision to move to a structural battery pack, which will increase safety and vehicle rigidity in the event of an accident. This is very exciting. Let me know your thoughts on all of this, friends. What do you think about this new Tesla casting partnership? Uh, this is Armin Haria from TorqueNews.com. Please subscribe to our channel for daily Tesla news. Ring the bell so you don't miss my next coverage. Let's God bless you. Peace be with all of you. And let's move on to our next story.